Do you still get embarrassed doing certain things in front of each other? <laughs> uh, what is this giggle? Uh oh, what's your answer? Uh, Donald ducking. <laughs> <laughs> you have to explain what Donald Ducking is. Oh, I was hoping you might do it. Hello and welcome to the Pillow Talks podcast. We're your hosts, Vanessa and Xander Marin. I'm a sex therapist with over 20 years of experience. And I'm just a regular dude. We share the ups and downs in our relationship while giving you step-by-step techniques for improving yours. Make sure you subscribe for your weekly double date full of totally doable sex tips, practical relationship advice, hilarious and honest stories of what really goes on behind closed bedroom doors, and so much more. It's the sex education you wish you'd had. Today we are doing another Ask Us Anything. (laughs) Wow. Ask Us Anything. (laughs) I thought we weren't going to be able to use that take, but I think we should roll with this. <laughs> Vanessa does have some pretty incredible clearing her throat moments, the majority of which you guys never get to hear because oh my God, that was she just so weird. She like chokes on her words or starts coughing or something. So it's not really appropriate to leave in. But that was like that was like a little frog in the throat. It was. Okay, let me try it again. Another ask us Anything. Anything. <laughs> that was really scary. <laughs> I'm really curious to hear it back on the recording now because I feel like either it will sound scary or it's just going to sound normal and then we're going to feel like we were overreacting to I it. Think, I think you said ask us anything totally normally and then you somehow like choked <laughs> right at the end. So <laughs> we're doing an Ask Us Anything episode today because these have proven to be some of our most popular episodes. And I think it's just really fun to kind of sit and shoot the shit and talk to each yeah, other. See where it goes. We're recording this after Christmas. And it just feels like a good day to have a kind of shoot in the shit episode. Yeah, let's shoot it. We're a little tired. So I think we'll be maybe a little more unfiltered. Um, <laughs> who knows? Maybe we'll get spicy with some of the questions, but I I think it'll be entertaining. There are some uh, good questions here, some very random ones. Yeah, there's al- there's always good questions, which is why it's fun to do these. Thanks to Rocket Money for supporting Pillow Talks. Rocket Money will quickly and easily identify your subscriptions for you so you can stop paying for the ones you don't want or need. Stop throwing your money away, cancel unwanted subscriptions, and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash pillow. And thanks to Cozy Earth for supporting Pillow Talks. Cozy Earth gave us an exclusive offer for Pillow Talks listeners today, 35% off site-wide when you use the code Pillow Talks. What we did to make this one a little bit different is we asked, it's an all pleasure, no business episode. So we've done different themes with these episodes Mm -hmm. in the past. And for this one, we put out a call that said, you know, what's something that you want to know about us personally, nothing about the business? Because we, I think most recently we did a a more businessy themed one. Yeah. So, no, this will be cool. Personal questions. Okay, let's get into it. First question. A little spicy. How early in your relationship did you have sex? We had sex on our second date, which was our third time hanging out and or hooking up. Right? Is that true? No, I think it was like the third time that we... So we met. We met on Saturday night. On a Saturday night. We had our first date on Monday. On Monday, we did oral sex. (laughs) (laughs) We did third base. Then Wednesday, we had another date and we had sex that night. No, I think we had sex on Friday. No, because Friday. We did Monday, Wednesday, Friday and Friday we had sex. No, so Friday we went out to like, we went out to like a music club thing and we had already had sex at that point. We went to, on Wednesday night, we went and saw that that movie of the Knife concert. (laughs) Kind of an, an odd date, but um, <laughs> no, it was a great date. It was a it's great date. No, it's, it's a it's a it's a weird date to describe to other people. But um, yeah, we had we had sex that night. We were starting, you know, making out, and we On got Wednesday? really hot and bothered. I really thought it was Friday. I, it, okay. I am ninety nine percent certain. Okay, well, it was it was 
you know, it was soon. We were we were ready for it. <laughs> it was it was soon, um, but it was it was fun. <laughs> I'm glad that we, it felt it felt honestly it felt it felt good that we like had a little bit of like that we waited a little bit but then not too long like I think both of us really enjoyed meeting each other and enjoyed our first date and kind of like it was sort of this vibe of like let's not have this turn into a one night stand and so we accomplished that mm-hmm. by not having sex on the very first night I guess one could argue and you know for my 22 year old self I was like great <laughs> and then it was game on after that. I mean, I think we could have had sex the first night and we were still so into each other. Oh, yeah. I'm not a big believer that like having sex at the beginning of a like a new thing ruins it or like you'll lose interest. I yeah. think I still would have been very interested yeah. in you. And and I'm I'm not either. I've I've never really I've never been the type where it's like, oh, that was like too quick or that was too easy or whatever mm-hmm. or whatever it is. But I do think that there is sort of when you meet someone new, it's like you don't know how they think about that so much. We didn't really talk about it. Oh, what is, <laughs> mm-hmm. we, we, you know, admittedly, we did not talk about that. And so I think, you know, when you were first meeting someone, you're kind of playing this game of like, oh, well, what are they going to think if we do this? Or what's going to happen if we do that? And so, you know, sometimes maybe you, uh, you take a bit more of a conservative approach just to be safe or careful. So that's what we did. And uh, it all worked out. It all worked out. Okay, next question made me laugh. Someone wrote, do you shoot videos in your house? It always looks so minimal and white. It does. It does for now. <laughs> we get, we've gotten roasted for this a few times in the comments, too, of different uh, like reels that we've done. People are like, ooh, let's work on your interior <laughs> decorating. Believe us. Believe, We're trying. Wait, believe me, we are. We are working on it slash trying. And soon there will be a lot of progress. We moved soon. into this house in July. And you know what, guys? Furniture is roll back ordered. So things are just taking a lot of time. We have some furniture that we brought from our old house, but not enough furniture. And yes, it is very minimal because we don't have very many things right now. But we should be getting more in Within January. the next month. Month or, within the next month or two, we have a number of things arriving. We're doing a couple kind of big like install type things. Yeah. And hopefully <laughs> things will start to get a little more exciting. So, the, so I don't stop know. roasting yeah. us. <laughs> I also, you know, the thing is you're you're seeing a lot of like white walls. Like when you are furnishing a house, very often you will try to get all the furniture in before you start putting art. Oh, yeah. We have nothing on the walls. Before you start putting art on the wall. So, like, art is kind of like the lowest thing on our list right now. Right now, it's like, get the furniture in. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's, you know, that's another reason why you're really not seeing anything on the walls. Because, like, we got to get the furniture in and then figure out, okay, where, okay, a piece of art can go, like, here, like, centered above this couch. But right now, we don't know exactly where everything is going to go. So, that's why everything it's white. So stay tuned on Instagram at Vanessa and Xander for the grand interior design reveal yeah. at some point. Someday. Hopefully. Someday, hopefully. <laughs> Fingers crossed. All right. Um, Vanessa, what is something on your bucket list? Okay. So something on my bucket list that I already achieved was writing a book, but also on my bucket list is to have a book be a New York Times bestseller. Like the idea of being New York Times best-selling author. Vanessa Marin. Who is she? (laughs) That is one of the biggest dreams that I have had my entire life. I've always wanted to have a book that was on that list. All right. So how do we make that happen? (laughs) Wow. You you really set that up for me. Thanks, babe. (laughs) Yeah. Let's tee you up, babe. (laughs) Okay. If you haven't heard us talk about it, we wrote a book. So we did achieve that book. Well, I don't know if that was on your bucket list. Was writing a book ever on your bucket list? It was on my list of things I never would have even imagined that I would have or could have done. (laughs) So we wrote a book. It's called Sex Talks, The Five Conversations That Will Transform Your Love Life. And it is all about how couples can talk about sex with each other. We know that this is something that feels really overwhelming and intimidating to so many couples. There are so many people who have never talked about sex, even with the person they are having sex with. And so it was really important to us to give you practical step-by-step tips for how to talk about sex, the exact conversations to have, and maybe even a little bit of convincing about why talking about sex is such 
a powerful thing. Well, I mean, spoiler alert, it is so important because when you start comfortably talking about sex, more often you start having way better sex. It's a really simple connection, but the more you talk about it, the more comfortable you feel, the more connected you feel when you're talking about it, you are naturally going to be having much better sex. I promise. Mm. It's a really cool book. It's super fun. If you enjoy the podcast, if you enjoy following us on Instagram, like you're going to love the book. So one thing that we have learned in the process of becoming first time authors is that the only way to get on this New York Times bestseller list is through pre-orders. Yeah. Unfortunately, so- you don't just release a book cross your fingers, <laughs> hope for the best and like <laughs> buy the New York Times and like looking through the list. Oh, there I am. Unfortunately, that's not how it works. Sadly, no. Yeah, so to get on that list, it's quite complicated. There are a whole bunch of factors that go into it, but really the only way that you can even be considered is if you have a ton of pre-orders because the pre-orders, basically what happens is like you put in the order for the book, but it doesn't fully get processed until the day that it's released. And so then the day that it's released, it's like all these orders come in at the same time and it like shows the New York Times like, oh, look at all the interest in this book it's like skyrocketing so we never knew this before Xander and I had never pre-ordered a book it just like it never occurred to me it was like oh I'll buy the book when it's out why would I pre-order it I didn't know this and I wasn't able to support any of my favorite authors and now that I do know it I'm gonna be pre-ordering the hell out of things going forward oh yeah but if you would be willing to help us well help me get my bucket list item yeah, checked off the list and help me help Vanessa <laughs> <laughs> then we would be so appreciative of you pre-ordering the book. So we have set up a special little website. It's sextalksbook.com, sextalksbook.com. And there are links to pre-order it from all the major retailer, ta- re, retail. Retailer. Retailers. Retailers. <laughs> Retailers. Don't purchase All it the- from a retailer. <laughs> purchase it from a retailer. All a retailer the- <laughs> is like that's like like someone like buys the buys the audiobook version and then like <laughs> And then, like, illicitly records their own version of it. Please don't do that. They're retelling the book to you. Um, Retailer. So we have all the links there so you can go buy the book. And we want to say thank you for being willing to support the book. We really think that it is going to transform so many relationships. And so it's not just, like, a, a selfish desire to be on the New York Times bestseller. Like, that also signals to more people, oh, hey, look at this bestseller. This is a good book. I should buy it. So we really appreciate your support. And we wanted to do something really special to say thank you for that support as well. Yeah, we're really going to make this worth your while. Why don't you tell the people what they will get if they pre-order the hardcover version of Sex Talks? It does come in a couple of different formats, but we've learned another weird thing about the book world is that only the hardcover counts as a pre-order. So that's what we have to do. We got to play along with their rules. If you're a Kindle or an audiobook person, maybe you give the hardcover to a friend or to your partner or something like that. But this is what we do if you order the hardcover pre order. Yeah. So if you pre order the hardcover, you are going to get for free our Dirty Talk 101 guide. That is for sale right now for $69. And that is way more money than the book costs. The book costs like $22 to $25-ish, depending on where you get it. So you're going to get Dirty Talk 101. This is our best-selling guide that shows you how to start getting more comfortable with Dirty Talk, how to figure out what kind of Dirty Talk or even just what kinds of words and phrases you like, what kinds of words and phrases your partner likes, how to match those two things up, and just like have a type of dirty talk that feels really authentic to you. It's not, mm-hmm. you know, not like some some porn star thing. All right. Then you're also going to get our how to know what you want in the bedroom guide, which is also going to help you figure out like what the hell do you actually want? Like I think a lot of people get caught up thinking, well, god, why would I even talk about sex when like I'm not really even sure like what's in it for me. I'm not sure what I like. Maybe I haven't had a lot of really great sexual experiences at all. And so this guide is a super simple way to just start figuring out what is it that you want? What is it that you like? And then get you to a point where maybe you could start communicating some of those things. And so that guide we sell for $19. That's $88 worth 
of free stuff that we are selling on our website right now if you pre-order the book and then you get there's, more. There's one other thing that we're going to be announcing within the next few days of this Soon. episode coming out that is also something available to purchase on our website that might also involve some sort of buckets. <laughs> But, you know, you'll just have to stay tuned. Yeah, you'll you'll other, get that if you pre-order. Other free stuff. I mean, yeah, just all <laughs> the more reason to just buy it today. Because, yeah, if we do add more freebies to the offer, you're going to get those automatically mm -hmm. via email. There might be even other surprises in the works, like other discounts on things. Like, we really Oh, we just... already spilled the beans on that yeah, one. Yeah, I know. I know. We did. But, <laughs> it, you know, there might be other discounts and whatnot. So just mm. get... Get the book. We promise you this is going to be 100% worth your Well, while. since we already still spilled the beans, I'll share. We're doing our extremely popular intimate or nasty event next month. And so that's our two challenges. We have our sex challenge and our connection challenge. The sex challenge is more focused on physical intimacy, connection challenge more on emotional intimacy. And with intimate or nasty, we offer them at the same time. That's like the only time during the year that the two are open. And you get a great discount if you purchase them together. And you'll get an even bigger discount if you pre-order Sex Talks. We're basically crediting you $30 towards either or both challenge. So it's like you're getting more than the book. Yeah, I mean, you're basically <laughs> like getting, getting the, the book, book for free. You're getting the book for free plus a couple dollars plus another like 88 or more dollars worth over of free. over Like, yeah, we're, we're just trying to make this such a slam dunk thing. Plus, like, <laughs> plus a how to start talking about sex guide that you can use right now while you wait for the book to come out. Plus a workbook that we put together to like help you dive deeper to every chapter. Workbooks usually end up getting sold sep like as a separate book, but you're getting that for free. And we're doing a virtual like book party event. You'll get a ticket to that too. So, I mean, it's like it's it's mind boggling how much stuff you're getting just by ordering this like twenty two dollar book. So we would really appreciate your support. We hope that all of these thank yous that we're giving to you just help it feel really worthwhile for you. But again, would just greatly, greatly appreciate your support helping achieve this bucket list item. Okay, Xander, next question is, do you guys have a faith? That is a very good question. So we are, I would say, Vanessa and I are culturally Jewish. Mm -hmm. We are technically fake Jews because we were <laughs> not fake Jews. Well, no, no, I, I'm about to explain what I mean by fake Jews. Um, so both of us are, you know, we, we grew up with, I would say, more of the Jewish faith than any other faith in our lives. However, the uh, Judaism comes down to us through our fathers. And technically speaking, Judaism gets passed down through your mother. So both of our mothers technically would have needed to convert to Judaism in order for us to be considered proper Jews. Mm -hmm. However, um, for me personally, I'll let Vanessa speak for herself. I never really identified with having much of a, a faith outside of just sort of like a cultural thing or, you know, celebrating a couple of like the high holidays in Judaism. But I will say that Recently, over the last couple of years, I've definitely developed much more of uh, what I would consider to be a spirituality. There was a while where, you know, I, I kind of didn't really believe in anything and was just sort of finding myself feeling kind of lonely in the world or, I don't know, kind of kind of lost at sea, so to speak, like thinking that like that I knew everything, that, you know, the world was kind of just like the way that I perceived it. And I've really kind of transformed my way of thinking over the last couple of years. And I feel a lot healthier, a lot happier, um, you know, kind of like seeing that there is a higher power or higher power than I am aware of, that there, there's more going on than just what I can see. And for me, there's a lot of comfort knowing like, oh, it's not just all about me. It's not all about like what I can do. Like, you know, I can just kind of, I can just... uh Give it up to whatever else is out there when I'm not sure about something. I don't need to be all-knowing or all-powerful. Mm -hmm. So my backstory on religion, like Xander said, my dad is Jewish. My mom was raised Catholic. And so when they got married and started having kids, they had conversations about not wanting to impose any sort of religion on us. My mom was really like 
forced to be Catholic in some ways that were pretty traumatizing to her. So it was important not to, you know, have a, to like to allow her kids to decide if they wanted to have a religion and what kind of religion they wanted to have, which I appreciate that that she was so thoughtful about that. So, yeah, I think culturally I connect with Judaism. Um, I wouldn't say I'm like a religious person, but similar to you, like I do, I feel like a spiritual person. I feel like I have a connection to, uh, you know, to a higher power. I feel like there's yeah, some some sort of force operating in the world, and I feel connected to that, and I feel a sense of, like, peace in that connection, but not any sort of um, – I don't feel any sort of desire for, like, an organized religion in my life. All right, favorite book you have recently read, Vanessa? So I'm still on my Sarah J. Moss – actually, I don't know how to say her last Ma- – Moss or Mass? I have no M-A-A-S. idea how it's spelled. Moss. Moss. It's Moss? probably Moss. I think that's probably Moss. a Dutch. Mm-hmm, probably. Okay, anyways, I'm still on my SJM kick. <laughs> I've read, like, all of her books. I mean, I'm on the first Crescent City, uh, and there's one more. And then once I finish that, like, one and a half more books, I'll be done with any everything she's ever written. And I just started them, like, this summer, which is kind of bonkers. So I just finished her Throne of Glass series, and I I really liked that by the end. So I'm just on this spicy, sexy fantasy kick right now that I did not think that I would be on this journey, but here I am. Um, and yeah, I don't know what I'm going to read when I'm done with it. Actually, I do know what I'm going to read when I'm done with it, but <laughs> oh. I got a new Tana French book in the lineup which I also never thought I would ever be into those are like procedural like psychological detective mystery types of things which I never thought I'd be into like crime novels but Tana French is just like she's so good anyway Xander big reader over here what's your (laughs) favorite book you've recently read I'm not the the last book you recently read I don't know I need to get back into the books not a reader I am not a big reader I'm not a big reader I really like I really like sci-fi I really like what people call kind of like hard or technical sci-fi and it's just it's hard to find really good stuff I will say my my all time favorite is um Kim Stanley Robinson the Mars trilogy or the Mars series. Um, I just I I love those books so much, and it is very difficult to find other ones that measure up. <laughs> okay, what is your biggest pet peeve? And I know you're excited to answer this one. Oh, I'm so excited to answer <laughs> answer this. I, I just did it. Yeah. Well, so. We were going to take this question out because I was like, God, I can't really think of any pet peeves. Um, You know, I'm just not really a pet peeve person. And then Vanessa did something. And I called it out. I said, oh, it's this. Vanessa does this thing. For the life of me, I cannot understand why you would do this. I'm scratching my nose. That's all that I'm doing. So Vanessa says... It's an aggressive scratch. She says she's scratching her nose. What she does is she puts her palm... (laughs) into her nose pushes very hard and then like rubs her palm around and sometimes you got an itch in there and it it's like as if like she's trying to break her own nose but not going that hard but and then the, and then the nose it makes this noise it's like <laughs> That's awful. That is what it that sounds is like. That's not what it sounds like. It is what it sounds like <laughs> to me. You know, my perception is that this is what it sounds like and it squicks me out it squicks you does it give you the ick it gives me the ick really? it gives me the heebie-jeebies you don't want to have sex with me when i it do that feel it feels like you're gonna break something inside and i don't <laughs> like it what if we were right about to have sex and i did that but you were like ready to go well Could you, know, you continue you know what this just made me think of something really funny is that if i had my eyes closed if i had my eyes closed I wouldn't necessarily know that that's what you're doing. And it sounds like it, it could be also be a sexy noise. <laughs> so maybe so you're is... actually turned on by it is what you're saying. Yeah, maybe there's some like weird cognitive there's a fine dissonance line going between on here. Ick and... <laughs> yeah. Ick and uh. <laughs> All 
All right, mine is boring. It's just when you're like not making any effort to not fart in front of me. We've talked about this one a bunch of times before. Especially when you're when I not can... making any. When you're... Well, no, because I want to be clear. Sometimes we don't have perfect control over farts. Sometimes they do slip out, but like I can tell when you're making zero effort or when you're actually making an effort to fart, and that's annoying. Speaking <laughs> of making an effort, like last night. Last night, I made a huge effort, an unnecessary effort. I was in the bathroom, which is my safe place for oh, no, farts. Oh, you were in, be- in bed. You were really pushing them out. And I was just like, oh, God. No, last last night I was brushing my teeth. I was in the bathroom. The bathroom, <laughs> as you may know, because we've said this before, the bathroom is my safe place for farts. <laughs> Vanessa, just out of the goodness of her heart, really, has decided that it is totally fine to fart in the bathroom. <laughs> And Wait, so, can I just share well, the story from my perspective? She doesn't fart in the bathroom, but Wait, I do. I'm standing at the sink, just like putting my face creams on or whatever. And I'm looking at Xander and he's facing me. And then all of a sudden he just starts like moonwalking backwards into the shower and then just lets it rip. But I was, there was a second there. I was like, what is he doing? Why are you like moonwalking into the shower? I, I knew that you were going to wonder. And I was brushing. I was in the middle of brushing my teeth, like with the Sonicare. Oh, yeah, well, so like I, couldn't, I couldn't talk. I was like, <laughs> you know, so I'm, I'm in the bathroom. I'm brushing my teeth. Vanessa leaves the bathroom and I'm like, oh, thank God I have a fart. <laughs> and then I'm like, it's coming. I'm about to fart. And then she comes back in. And I was just like, God damn it. If I fart right now, she's just going to think that like I've been waiting for her. And I was trying to be really polite. That's That was my intention. I was just like, God damn it. But I had the toothbrush in my mouth. I couldn't say anything. And I was just like, I'm just going to back on into the shower and see what she thinks. This is going to look weird. But well, I made an effort. You did. You did. <laughs> I went above and beyond. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's let's move on. Um, is it ever exhausting talking about your relationship so much? So this one also made me chuckle a little bit because I think like what I really want people to understand is that we're the bosses of this business and like we decide what we want to do. So if there's something that we don't, I mean, obviously there are parts of like running any business where you don't love every single part. But when it comes to something this personal, like talking about our relationship, if we were exhausted by doing it, if we didn't love it in the first place, we wouldn't do it. And if there are times that we like get exhausted by it, we wouldn't do it. Like we don't force ourselves to show up, whether it's on Instagram, whether it's here, like we don't force ourselves to do it if we're really not feeling it. Yeah. And I think the other piece of it is that our our thing is not like talking 100% about our relationship. We talk about our relationship mixed in with all kinds of other stuff. Mm -hmm. And so we are never in a position where we're like, God, we really don't want to talk about our relationship, but we haven't done anything on social for five days and we got to say something like, yeah, we never do that. We're not in that position. We have all, you know, we answer questions from other people. Mm -hmm. We, you know, we do a podcast on all kinds of different topics. We have all these different things that we talk about. And so for us, it's never like there's never this pressure of like, oh, you got to talk about your relationship now, even though you don't want to. Yeah, never. I mean, we we just don't force ourselves to on an ongoing basis or on an individual basis. But we get questions like this a lot, usually like on social media. People, yeah, like, do you ever get tired of talking about this? Or do you ever feel like you have to? Or something that comes up sometimes is people are like, why don't you ever take a day off on social media? Like, it's okay to take a break. And I'm like, oh, like, we genuinely enjoy showing up on social. Like, we're not forcing ourselves. If we want to take a break, we'll take a break. So it's interesting. It's like, I I appreciate people being curious about that. And some of the messages have been really nice. Like, hey, take a day off. Like, we'll be here to support you when you come back. So some of them are really kind and I appreciate that. But it's like, we're never pushing ourselves to do something that we don't want to do. So you don't have to worry about us. Yeah, also we each give each other veto you know no questions asked veto power Mm -hmm. over any type of thing that we're going to share so there's never this pressure between us of like oh vanessa wants to share this but xander doesn't and Mm -hmm. like i'm doing it against my will or she's doing it against her will yeah we yeah we just yeah we've never run into anything close to that 
type of situation. And also, like, the reason that we don't get sick of it is because we know that it's important. Like, it's, I don't know how to describe this. It's not that we're super just egotistical. Like, I just want to talk about myself again today. Actually, I know I've said this before in these Ask Us Anything episodes. Like, the first one that we did, I did not want to do it because I was like, this is not going to be interesting. Like, people don't want to listen to an hour of us answering random questions about ourselves, do they? So it's not a, like an ego thing at all about like, oh, time for me to talk about myself again. But I do think like honest and open and vulnerable conversations about sex and relationships are so rare that I really think that it's it's like a, a gift that we're giving to the world. Does that sound super egotistical? I don't know. It's just like... <laughs> Here's me giving my gift to the world again. No, I mean, I just, I think it is valuable. And so that motivates me to keep going. And when we get feedback from people saying like, thank you for sharing that. I felt so alone, you know, because I go through something like this too. And you sharing it made me realize that I'm not alone. So it's, you know, it's getting feedback like that that makes me feel like what we're doing is important. There's a value to it. And that makes me want to keep doing it. Well, and it's also not like, oh God, like we're, we're doing this and we're so tired of it. And it's so annoying like oh the last thing i wanted you know once we log off like all i want to do is not talk about our relationship like there's actually when you talk about your relationship when you talk about your sex life it actually has a way of improving those things Mm -hmm. making you you know i feel more comfortable with our sex life i feel more comfortable initiating sex i feel more comfortable asking for sex or asking for something new or whatever it is i feel like all the talking that we do, like we do it in a healthy way. We have we have boundaries. We're each allowed to say what we want or not not want to say in a mm-hmm. given moment. And you know, all the talking about it that we do do leads to a closer relationship and a better sex life. So it's it's like it's not like oh we're just helping other people at the detriment of ourselves. Like yeah. I feel like we are able to help other people and help ourselves. Like honestly, like, we might get more out of it than <laughs> than you do. Like that's why we're trying to encourage you to do it too. Okay, what is something you do that makes you feel confident or overcome insecurity? Um, let's see. I I mean, I guess like surfing is the first thing that mm-hmm. comes to mind. Um, which is, which is funny because sometimes, you know, like you'll have a session or two <laughs> that don't go so good and then, you know, maybe yeah, <laughs> like, feel a little less Like calm. today? <laughs> yeah. Like, like today, maybe like the past two days, the, the surf has been really good here. Um, the last couple of days, but it is also right around Christmas and everyone has the day off and it's just like insanely crowded. Uh, the tide has been kind of funky. So there's been like not ideal, uh, moments to go surfing and so i've been surfing a couple times it hasn't been so great but what i do is i just i try to focus myself on like you know what's like one moment from that session that i can feel really good about and you know if all else fails it's also like just it helps me feel strong and capable and you know it's you know just i mean moving your body i think is for, for me is just a good way for me to feel good about myself so I like that. Yeah, I think my answer is the same. Like whenever I'm doing something like moving my body and not exercise necessarily like for like for the purposes of losing weight or getting toned or anything like that, but there's just something about moving my body that makes me feel sexy, makes me feel confident, connected to myself. All right, now I'll answer the other side of this question because it was like, what makes you feel confident slash overcome insecurity? And what I will say about overcoming insecurities, I I have had, I, I still do have plenty of insecurities. Um, I used to really be plagued by kind of more like social insecurity and like feeling like, like oh, well, what is this person going to think about that? What are they thinking about me? Or, oh, I said something really weird, like, should I be self-conscious or something like that? And I think what I've kind of realized is like, like I am my own harshest critic. Like Mm -hmm. nobody is thinking the things that I'm thinking they are thinking. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like it's just not happening. Like for the most part, we are, you know, people tend to be kind of like more wrapped up in themselves. Like they're not like digging into everything that I am doing. And um, so I just try to remind myself, like if I have this thought of, oh my God, like, I must I must have looked really weird doing that or I must have sounded really dumb saying that or like oh I wonder what my friends are thinking cuz like I didn't come to this event or whatever. Mm-hmm. I just try to remind myself like you know if I'm out with my friends like 
<laughs> I'm not really thinking about like the person who didn't come or I'm not like trying to like psychoanalyze like what this person said or whatever. So I think that's just a good reminder of like no one is noticing <laughs> yeah. all these little things that I think I'm noticing. Mm-hmm. Before we go any further, let us tell you a little bit about Rocket Money. They are a brand new sponsor of the podcast. They're formerly known as Truebill, and they're a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. And this was interesting timing because just the other day, I realized that we had been paying for a subscription that we have not used for probably a year. Uh Uh-oh. Yeah. And I mean, it was like 25 bucks a month. So it's not- Adds up. Yeah, that adds up very quickly. And I think this is one of the frustrating things about subscriptions is even when they're smaller, like maybe it's five bucks a month or something like that, it's just- so easy to forget that you have it and if it's something that you're not using very regularly like we were paying for something that we haven't used in over a year right and so we just had kind of forgotten and it popped into my mind so don't rely on your brain to just magically remind you of subscriptions that it has already forgotten about (laughs) stop throwing your money away cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash pillow that's rocketmoney.com com slash pillow rocketmoney.com slash pillow and let's tell you a little bit more about cozy earth we have teamed up with cozy earth and they are offering you 35 percent off site-wide when you use the code pillow talks at cozy earth.com so over christmas when we were doing our gifts exchange Cozy Earth gifts ended up being like the most popular gifts that went around. There were two different family members, not us, but other people who gave Cozy Earth as gifts. They were super excited talking about how much they loved their sheets, how excited they were to gift them to other people, sheets, loungewear, all kinds of stuff. And we were very excited because we love Cozy Earth as well. Our sheets, I mean, they're amazing they're so good they're so good we're both absolutely obsessed with them they're super soft they're temperature regulating which is great because both of us tend to run a little bit hot at night but we stay cool and comfortable all night long we really love these sheets but the cool thing about cozy earth is they do have a 10-year warranty on all their products and a hundred night sleep test which means you can try it for a hundred nights and if you're not loving it you can just send it back for a full refund but We really think that you're going to love their sheets. Way before 100 nights. Oh, yeah. And like we said, Cozy Earth provided an exclusive offer for Pillow Talks listeners today. You can get 35% off site-wide. That's a wild discount. That's great. 35% off site-wide when you use the code PILLOWTALKS at CozyEarth.com. All right, next question. Have you ever gotten burned out on certain sex acts or positions? That's an interesting question. I don't... I think I have. I'm, uh, yeah, like, I'm like I'm trying to think about it. Like I've it. never, I've never been like, oh, missionary again. Like there might be times where I'm wanting to do a, a different position or like mix things up a little bit, but it never. I don't think I ever get like a burned out feeling about it. Yeah, no. I mean, I, all I can think of is that you know sometimes I will have an awareness of like, oh, the last couple times we had sex was like I was on top the whole time. And then and <laughs> and and but that's as part as it ever gets. I just go, hey, why don't you get on top? Or let's do another position. Uh-huh. Let's do something different. So I think that in the past maybe that would have been more likely to happen. Like when when you or I, or perhaps like with a past partner, like I didn't feel comfortable mm-hmm. saying, oh, let's do something different. Mm-hmm. But I think once you have that, you know, that level of connection and confidence talking about things, Mm -hmm. you don't ever need to get burned out on anything because, I mean, what burned out implies is like you're doing something over and over and over because you're you're not able to Mm -hmm. ask for anything different or do anything different because you don't feel comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. So if you can feel comfortable with doing something different or you can feel comfortable asking to do something different, Mm -hmm. then you don't even need to ever get close to that point. Yeah. Uh, That's a good, very good point. Okay, the next question we're not going to answer, but it was an interesting one. So someone just straight up said, like, what's your income? And I, I think conversations about money are so fascinating. Like, there is a lot of overlap between money and sex. Like, 
we, you know, there's this taboo around it. There's a sense of like, oh, you don't talk about that. Or like you don't share intimate details about your sex life with other people, just like you don't share intimate details about your finances with other people. And it's an interesting one to mull over because I do think there are certain aspects of like our personal sex life that we won't discuss. You know, there are things that we keep private to ourselves and there are aspects of our financial situation that we keep private into ourselves. But I, I do think like with money in particular, there's... There, it's like, why don't we talk about it more? I think it would benefit us so much, you know, to talk about money more openly. Like, what do we make? What do we spend on? What do we save on? What are healthy financial habits? Like, even just sharing financial resources with each other more often would be beneficial. But it's just, yeah, there's a very interesting taboo around money the same way there is around sex. Okay, now, least favorite chores. We're going to go from taboo to, uh, <laughs> to I don't know, pet peeve type questions. <laughs> uh, that's how we roll in these Ask Us Anything episodes. Okay, mine is definitely unloading the dish rack. There's something about the dish rack in particular that I I don't know why it makes no sense, but I hate doing it. Wait, I will do mean- wash, I'll wash dish. I would rather wash dishes than have to take the clean, dry dishes and put them back away. Wait, so when you say the dish rack, you just mean the, the bottom, the bottom of the dishwasher. Like you don't mind doing- No, no, I mean like the dishes that we have to hand wash. I actually don't oh. mind unloading the dishwasher for some reason. Odd. It's not like a favorite chore. Laundry is a favorite chore, but- I, yeah, for some reason, there's something that feels different about the dish rack, like the hand washed things. Huh. I hate it. That is really funny. I I kind of prefer unloading the dish rack over the dishwasher because I have to bend, I have to like bend and reach (laughs) over more. The the dish rack is like, it's all right there. Though, I mean, the one thing I think, you know, I, if I could venture a guess as to why you don't like it, why? it's because it's not organized the way the dishwasher. The dishwasher mm-hmm. has a clear organization True. and it's like, oh, okay, I'm grabbing the plates. Now I'm putting the plates away. Okay, now I'm grabbing the cups. I'm putting the cups away. And now that we have it's the structured. new one with the little silverware drawer at the top, oh my God, that brings me a lot of pleasure unloading <laughs> silverware. Interesting. So I think I think this is the answer. <laughs> Vanessa likes organization. And as long as there's an organization behind something, she's usually on board with it. And I think uh-huh. the dish rack, maybe we could stand it's to chaos. try to organize the our dish, dish rack is better. Chaos. But yeah, the dish rack is chaos. But and also, so Vanessa doesn't like, oh, I have to grab like five things. And then they go to like five different corners. Yes. It's so, also like having to go because the dishwasher, it's right under the cups and the plates. So I can clear it a lot faster. But the dish rack, it's like, oh, I got to walk to the other side of the kitchen to put away the spatulas. And then I got to come back and then I got to go back over there to put away the measuring cups. And it's just dumb. I don't like it. <laughs> it's dumb. What is your least favorite? My least favorite uh well yeah right now my least favorite is breaking down boxes uh we are in <laughs> we're in box we're... hell right now because uh, so we were in box hell when we first moved into this house because then you have like oh, you have like moving box boxes hell. you have all these you know like things that you needed to order from amazon and blah 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 and our <laughs> our recycling uh pickup is only every other week and <laughs> So you can only put so many things <laughs> really in the recycle bin. However, they are very amenable to you putting just like a bag of other stuff next to it. Fortunately, when we were in LA, that was a huge no-no. Like they <laughs> they would chastise you if it didn't all fit in the box. And it's like, dude, I'm trying to recycle. Like, can you, can you just pick up <laughs> my recycling? I've tried to make it as easy as possible on you. But anyway, I digress. But box yeah, hell. box hell right now because of the holidays. We had all these boxes and then, yeah, we like got some new mattresses. Mattresses. Mattress oh, boxes. God. Oh, my God. Awful. They're so big. Yeah. So like uh, I'm going to be doing some box breaking down shortly. I just, yeah, I don't like it because I have to like be on my knees on the floor. <laughs> it, you know, maybe I need some knee pads, some box, some box cutting <laughs> knee pads. Maybe that's what I need. Um, we'll see. And and then following on to that, um, it never used to be, but now because of where we live, taking out the trash is an annoyance because we have a we have a steep driveway, and I have to walk up to the top of the driveway. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we could bring the bins down, but then you have to drag full bins up a steep driveway, which is um, dangerous. I've tried it. Dangerous. It's fine. 
uh, most of the time, but if it's like wet and slippery, it's like not no. safe. So we leave the bins up top and then I have to walk up and toss the stuff. So, you know, it could be worse. <laughs> All right. Do you still get embarrassed doing certain things in front of each other? <laughs> uh, what is this giggle? Uh oh. What's your answer? Uh, Donald ducking. <laughs> you have to explain what Donald ducking is. Oh, well, I was hoping you might do it. Um, well, so I guess I don't really mind, but it, maybe I feel a little more embarrassed about it because I know Vanessa dislikes it so much. <laughs> we, we refer to. Uh, Removing your bottom half of your clothes when your top half, i.e. shirt, is still on as Donald ducking. <laughs> and so, you know, when, when one is Otherwise disrobing... Otherwise like Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, when, when one is disrobing, one has to be very cognizant of which articles of clothing one is taking off first. And sometimes my brain doesn't work that way. I'm just like, yoink, pants off. And I'm like, oh, God. Oh, my God, my T-shirt is on. It's just a really funny sight to see like a grown man with clothes on the top and then just totally bare assed on the bottom. I don't know. <laughs> see, just... look, look, we all have our own little insecurities and, and hang ups still. <laughs> to everyone that's like, oh, you're like perfect sexually. You don't say no to anything and you're comfortable with everything. We say no to ducking. We say <laughs> no. We say no to ducking in this house. Okay, my mine's less funny. Um, I still, to this day, sometimes get embarrassed initiating sex. Hmm. It's, it's very rare these days. I've come a long way. But there's like every once in a while where I still feel that like, oh, like, is he not going to, is he not into it right now? Should I? What if he says no? It still comes up for me every once in a while. Yeah, I think those same things sometimes. Oh. I still I still act on it though. <laughs> I mean um, I do too, but it does still yeah. You know the there. the interesting thing about this, Vanessa, is that I relative to I don't know, a number of years ago in our relationship, I feel like I initiate sex so much more oh, yeah. than I used to. So it's funny to it's funny to hear that like you ha like I mean, you definitely initiate sex less because you don't need to initiate it as often i guess i mean it's we're, a weird, we're so, in a season where you're the more of the initiator yeah i'm the aggressor <laughs> oh, no no i'm not um <laughs> but yeah it, it's funny it's just funny to hear you say that you know yeah you in in this time where you are perhaps initiating less uh -huh. that you actually feel more embarrassed to do it maybe it's a you're out of practice yeah, maybe it is a little bit out of practice. Um, and maybe it is because you're the primary one who initiates. Or, like, we do have a lot of instances where, like, neither one of us, like, explicitly initiates. It's just kind of mm -hmm. like, we both know where this is going kind of thing. Um, but I don't know. Maybe because you are doing more of it in this season of life that I feel a little more self-conscious about, like, oh, if he if he's not initiating, does that mean he's just, like, not into it? I don't know. I mean, it's pretty – It's it doesn't happen all the time for me, but I just – you know, I want to acknowledge that is still something that comes up for me sometimes. Oh, thanks for sharing. <laughs> all right. Now uh, I'm just moving into fun questions. Why, Pugs, would you ever get a third? <laughs> uh, they are snoozing behind us. Their, their snores, I'm sure, are going to get picked up on this episode. But we, so we originally picked Pugs because we were living in San Francisco in a tiny San Francisco apartment, and we couldn't get a big dog, so we wanted to get well, a little we, dog. We could get a, we I mean, could get a big dog. It didn't dog. feel fair to get a big dog and keep yeah. it cramped up in a tiny apartment. Yeah, we, we, wanted, we wanted a dog that would, you know, adapt well to San Francisco apartment life that wouldn't require an obscene amount an of exercise, exercise yeah. you know because like I was you know I was working away from the house I was gone most of the day Vanessa mm -hmm. was in and out um doing client sessions and stuff like that and I, I had grown up with with big dogs and like I you know I I am very aware of the amount of exercise that they need and it just felt like it wouldn't really be fair to to do that to a dog mm -hmm. in San Francisco and so then we were looking at smaller breeds like Frenchies and Bostons and pugs yeah. and we realized pugs tend to require less exercise than <laughs> than other small there there's a there's some small dogs that are very cute but are 
kind of uh, amped up, yeah, so to speak. And um, yeah, so then we were just like, okay, yeah, let's let's do pugs. It's kind of like the lazy apartment breed, <laughs> though not all not all pugs, not all pugs. There are some there are some, <laughs> some wild pugs, pugs out there. Oh yeah, but yeah, I mean, I I had always liked pugs. I thought their little smushy faces are very cute. So I don't I know if I ever pugs. met a pug really before. We got. I don't know one. if I had ever met one, but I just like thought they were. I mean, there were a bunch of. I liked Frenchies a lot. I liked bulldogs, but yeah. And just doing that research, it felt like the pug fit our lifestyle, <laughs> lazy apartment dweller lifestyle. Um, and then in terms of a third, I don't think we would get a third. I, it just like feels a little weird to be outnumbered by your animals. <laughs> And I've also, I don't know if this is true, but I've heard that it's not great to have three dogs because they can kind of like... It's two like, can gang up on the other. Yeah, two can gang up on the other a little bit. I don't know. Any uh, dog trainers out there, let us know if I just heard that out of nowhere. I don't know. But um, yeah, I mean, we'll definitely continue getting pugs throughout our we life. Love, yeah, I think once <laughs> once we got Winston, our first pug, it was kind of like a love affair. Yes. Pugs are... They're just they're just really great, really great, sweet dogs. It's hard hard to explain unless you have one or unless you know one. But and and I'm sure that whatever breed we had gotten, we probably would have fallen in love mm-hmm. with that breed. But uh, yeah, pugs are we great. just love they're bugs. Sweet, they're silly, they're very loyal, they're really goofy. They love to cuddle. Yeah, they love to cuddle each other, and they just want to be around you all the time. <laughs> Yeah, They're so really if you sweet. don't like that, don't get a pug. But I, both and also, of us, if you don't like shedding and farting and snoring, don't yeah, get a pug. <laughs> yeah, but we like the idea of a dog following us around, and so that's yeah. what we got, and that's what they do, and it's great. Okay, this one could be related. Do you have a favorite smell? Uh, <laughs> Little Frito paws, perhaps? I, yeah, my favorite smell is probably the dogs the first day or two after oh, a bath so it's just good. It's, it's so, so good. good it's and so little good paws, oh but when the paws start getting a little frito-y i, I really like a stinky paw yeah so uh, i don't know if it's all dogs or it's just <laughs> vanessa and me but uh we kind of think of our dogs smells as different stages of corn products <laughs> like it, well the first couple of days there's no corn it's just there's like no there's no corn it's just fresh fresh as hell like i mean i guess it's the the shampoo the scent of the shampoo the scent of the shampoo that we use on them which is great um and then they start to smell like a fresh, fresh corn tortilla, tortilla. <laughs> a fresh corn tortilla, which is mwah, so so good, so good. You know, we're we're both we're both Latin at heart. We love a good corn tortilla. And at that, heart, we're actually Latin. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's heart is your part of your body. Uh, it sounds like we're like fake. We oh, like yeah, want to be Latin. Yeah, no, we, we're we're we're, we're both Latin. Latino. Uh, <laughs> Okay, and then it, it then it turns into then Frito. Yeah. Then it turns into Fritos, which can you even buy Fritos anymore? I feel like yes. they're not. Okay, that's more of a throwback to my childhood. I've not had a Frito <laughs> in probably decades, but I do. I like the the chili cheese Fritos. Those are pretty good. They don't smell like the chili cheese. They just, just smell like, like the, the plain Fritos, which aren't really that tasty. Um, I would say it goes tortilla chip and then Frito. Frito's oh, like yeah. kind of stinky. Yeah, yeah. Frito is kind of getting, yeah. So yeah, that, it goes tortilla. <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's like, it's like, you know, the fresh corn and then it dries into, <laughs> into a corn chip. It gets fried and then it gets doubly fried into a Frito. And once they kind of get into like stinky Frito or like wheat la coche. <laughs> Oh, wow. He's really trying to prove he's a Latino that's, right now. That's when the funk comes in uh-huh. and it's time for another bath. And we go right back to the beginning. Uh, it's so good. <laughs> uh, I'll also put in a plug for trees after it's rained. Oh. That's a good smell. Okay. Yeah. That's a really good Solid. Smell. Solid. I mean, also like, you know, a fresh Christmas tree. That's pretty darn Ooh, good. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Rain or not, it's pretty good. <laughs> Okay, now what about your least favorite holiday? Because Vanessa's favorite holiday Mm. is Christmas. Yes, I love Christmas. Least favorite holiday, New Year's Eve, for sure. Oh, God, I I, I didn't even think of that. I've never been a New Year's person. Yeah, me too. I think I would say the exact same thing. New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. I'll just combine those into one. I just like, I get excited about it being, well, no, I won't even say that. Like, sure, it's a new year. Okay, great. 
<laughs> wow. <laughs> it sounds so bad, but I don't get that. Like, I don't know. I feel like a lot of people, people like kind of hate on the end of the year of like, oh God, I just want it to be next year. And then there's all this like optimism and excitement. And I'm, I'm excited about a new year, but I'm not, I'm not coming from this place of like, oh God, let us get to a new year. I don't know. I don't have that like whole trying to reset everything part of my brain but there's something about new year's eve in particular that just like i i just have never enjoyed it like i don't want to go out to a big party but i also like want to be invited to big parties so that i like i don't know i feel like i have options or i don't know but you were talking about social anxiety earlier and i feel like new year's eve stirs up social anxiety for me it's like i want to have like 10 invitations to do different things so i feel like popular (laughs) but then i don't want to do any of them interesting but then we've like we've done my favorite new year's eves have been ones where we spent with like smaller groups of people we've like cooked a really nice meal at home and like hung out like so i like doing it at home but in general it's like and especially these these later years like i don't like staying up to like past midnight (laughs) these later years yeah no i i don't either i've gotten older like i just staying up late it gets harder and harder for me and i know midnight is not it's hilarious because even just a few years ago like (laughs) midnight was when we were starting to get ready to go out um but these days in this season of life i'm an early early to bed type of person so it's like i don't like staying up i don't want to get super wasted I've never wanted to do like a club thing. I don't know. I just hate it. Yeah. I hate the whole thing. Yeah, I know. I don't want to do anything. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess I would say I don't hate it anymore because I don't participate in it <laughs> anymore. <laughs> I don't do anything. And so it doesn't really bother me. But yeah, I definitely used to really dislike New Year's because it was like, well, of course we got to go out like, you know, all going out with all my friends. We got to figure out something really epic to do. So there's all this pressure to do something really epic to try to get like all the friends into the same place doing the same Mm -hmm. thing. But then it's really hard to find the right thing to do or and like, oh, the yep. tickets are really expensive. And oh, God, what time do we have to get there so that we're there by midnight and we beat the crowd or not beat the crowd or whatever. And then it's just amateur hour. Like <laughs> so like back when I was going out a lot, it was like, oh, God, New Year's amateur hour. And like now now, like I don't go. Out. <laughs> I don't go out. I like my sleep. I like surfing early in the morning. <laughs> I don't want to mess with New Year's. <laughs> I'm looking forward. Hopefully, there's good waves on New Year's Day because oh, Dawn Patrol, will be New Year's Day, that is that is the call. Mm. Other Also, Christmas Day. <laughs> Christmas Day is the call. <laughs> I was not able to surf on Christmas Day. I checked the cameras and man, man, I missed out. But, <laughs> you know, I did not miss out on family and that's great. All right. Last question. Who is your favorite 49er. Well, a, are we talking about current current roster okay, or of life, all time? As a lifelong 49ers fan, you can have two. You can have a yeah, historical and a current. Oh man. That's tough. Well, I guess for historical, I'm gonna go with Vernon Davis. I have his jersey. Um I just yeah, I, I'm a big I'm a big Vernon Davis fan. Um I love uh the grab in the in the playoff game versus the New Orleans Saints back in god what was that late 2000s or something like mm-hmm. that or 2010s or early 2010s something like that <laughs> i'll never forget that moment i was a little i was i was young in the like steve young era um obviously like i that's when i started watching the 49ers and and really loving them oh i I mean i was too young like joe montana was probably quarterback when i was like five years old or something but i I don't Mm -hmm. really i don't remember that i wasn't watching football in five (laughs) (laughs) well what about your current favorite i mean do you have a historical favorite no i mean i was yeah you do oh i do (laughs) <laughs> you were traumatized by this player's oh. traumatic injury and the fact that they replayed it over and over and over okay. when it happened. So I did not grow up a Niners fan. I grew up in Southern California and I hated football. But then when I met Xander in San Francisco as a lifelong 49ers fan, I somehow he tricked me. He tricked me into liking football and I started loving it. So my favorite, my historical player, you know, his, the history of me liking the Niners goes back to like 2008, probably. Um, but Navarro Bowman, oh, I just, I don't even, I, there was just something about him 
the light in his eyes, the energy that he brought to the team. And he did have a really awful injury, and I just hated it. I, I genuinely was traumatized by that. It was really awful. Um, but I have his jersey, and I just I love him. He's retired, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's been a while. Um, and my favorite current player, you know. Who. Oh, I know who it is, but they don't. <laughs> Fred Warner. Because he's sexy. <laughs> That's a good looking man. Uh, I think he just got either engaged or married. Somebody in our, in our, I think a couple people in our Instagram audience, because I've posted about him before, and a couple people like were family friends with him or like knew him growing, growing up. Um, but he's a, you know, he just seems like a really nice man, a good partner, a good person. He's very attractive. Um, and I will always laugh about so, like, somebody on an Instagram message and was like, oh, I think Xander and Fred Warner look very similar. They do not. But I- <laughs> I'll take it. I will take it. <laughs> it's OK. I'm attracted to all different kinds of of people. So I can be attracted to Fred Warner and to Xander. <laughs> but he seems like a nice man, doesn't he? Like, yeah, wouldn't you just want to be friends with? I don't know if I could be friends with Fred Warner. I'd just be like, <sighs> Fred Warner, <laughs> so good looking. <laughs> no. He just seems like a nice guy. Okay, who's your favorite? Man, this is this is tough. Like, I, I really love the current 49ers team, but I don't know if there's anyone where I'm like, I don't know if I have like a, you know, he, like a runaway favorite. I will say I am I am feeling the the purdy mania. Oh, I'm, interesting. I'm, it's, it's such a good story. It's such a good story. You Mr. Know that Irrelevant. Big cock Brock. You like Ooh. that big cock energy? <laughs> big big Brock energy is uh, you know, what 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 the people are, are calling it. Um but uh yeah, I mean I'm you know, I'm I'm cautiously optimistic. I don't want to call it too early, but uh it's it's pretty exciting. You know, if you have no idea who Brock Purdy is, um this guy was drafted the very last pick in the NFL draft this year, which they call Mr. Irrelevant. They kind of make a joke out of it every year. Whichever team happens to have the last pick, they call that player Mr. Irrelevant. I think like the NFL kind of does like a Mr. Irrelevant profile <laughs> on them. Um, and this guy, the 49ers, had the last pick this year, drafted Brock Purdy. He's a quarterback. He was our third string quarterback and is now starting because Trey Lance got hurt and then Jimmy Garoppolo got hurt. And he's just come out of nowhere and is like an absolute beast, like making making all the throws, making all the reads. It's it's pretty incredible to watch, and uh, it's exciting. You're not going to say Kittle or CMC? Uh, yeah, I mean, no, you know what? Like, I might say... CMC like, has been very fun to watch. Yeah, I, he might be my second it, it was, It's very exciting that we traded for Christian McCaffrey. Um, he, he is pretty awesome. I love, I love me some Kittle. I also love me some Bosa. He's having a hell of a oh, year. I... Bosa is an absolute beast. Like he's just fun to watch. Cause he's just, he is far and away better than any, oh, any yeah. person that he goes up against. Yeah. We got some, we got some good players, some exciting ones to watch. I don't know. There was, you showed me that picture of, uh, George Kittle and Christian McCaffrey. Wait, McCaffrey. Yeah, McCaffrey. McCaffrey. Why don't they want to say McCafferty? Um, Christian McCaffrey in the locker room after the Christmas weekend game, and there was there was some BDE in that picture from CMC. Some BDE <laughs> from CMC. I was like, oh, okay, all right. I also also honorable mention to Debo Samuel. I have yes. him on my on my fantasy team too. He's you know not having quite as great of a season as he did last year, but he's just he's just a fun player to watch. And also always always enjoy just Jerry Rice in the stands, <laughs> like so hyped every single game. Always wearing some big chain. Mm -hmm. You know Jerry's one of the greatest 49ers of all time. All right. Well, that got random, man. Yeah, if Long you're still here, if you're still ran. here after, you know, if you care enough about us talking about a random football team that you are probably not a fan of, but maybe you're about to become a fan of, wink, wink, then congrats for being here. They're like thinking back like, yeah, Vanessa was right. These episodes are dumb. <laughs> Who would want to listen to Xander and Vanessa talking about the 49ers? Yeah, man. Like should we do like, like, a, like AMA, all 49ers <laughs> Nobody would listen. Okay, truly nobody would listen to that. 
maybe like you might be surprised we the, like, this might be how we break other into, 49ers fans we break into the sports world <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for listening. If you have an idea for a future Ask Us Anything theme that you want to see, let us know. We always love hearing your feedback on our episodes. So come on over to Vanessa and Xander on Instagram and let us know. And if you're still here and you still haven't bought our book, pre-ordered our book, get your ass over to sextalksbook.com. Pre-order that book. You're going to get a massive massive package of freebies <laughs> some some big freebie there's, energy there's some big, big freebie, freebie energy, energy. <laughs> bfe baby get it sextalksbook.com and yeah with that that's it for today's episode of pillow talks thank you so much for listening join us again next week when we talk about the journey of how we wrote that book can't wait can't wait <laughs>